All right, here we go, guys. Now, when this was first dedicated in 1997, there's only one statue of President Roosevelt in this memorial, and that's when we'll find the third room. That's cloak, hiding the fact he's in a wheelchair, like it's because he saw in photos at the time. But there were no wheels in the chair initially, so he had to sell them this big to not make people happy. So President Clinton was met right up front by two dozen protesters in wheelchairs, but all he had to say to them was, I agree with you. So I went to the Senate yesterday, had to approve a fifth room, this. The prologue, a life-size statue of President Roosevelt in his homemade wheelchair made of a kitchen chair and two bicycle wheels. This room and that statue added a few years later paid for $1.65 million of additional private funding raised by separate disability groups as it was very important to them. The most accessible in Moral DC and a great inspiration for anybody with disabilities who can be disabled and still accomplish so much. Now, as we come around through first term, 1933 to 1937, there are quotes in the walls throughout the memorial, with the exception of two from Eleanor, the one in the front room behind him, the one in the last room behind Eleanor herself. These are all Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This room is largely dedicated to his first inaugural address, and each fountain has significance as well. This one in particular, the sharp dive, represents the stock market crash in 1929 he was trying to help us recover from. Right around here, guys, my group. Found you a little bit of shade. So as you enter second term, this is dedicated full on to the Great Depression. And these statues represent hope, hunger, and despair. The first word positive down to your right, the fireside chat. As a gentleman's listening to the radio to hear President Roosevelt had to say for what he's gonna do to get his fed and back into work again. He was the first president to use the radio to reach out to the public and did it every Sunday for a while. Part of the reason was so well loved. On the other side, we have the bread line. The men standing in line for something to eat, each wearing a different hat and jacket intentionally to show how it affected everybody from all walks of life. And those that affected the rural areas, the farming couples showing the ill effects of malnutrition. Uh, hunger. Yeah, the hunt, the, the bread line. Thank you. 
So first of all, this fountain here, with multiple steps, represents the Tennessee Valley Authority. And the down building project he initiated helps people work. And this is my favorite part. You are allowed to touch and fill this. Again, most accessible in Moral in DC. So even if you're lost of sight, you can still fill the hands and the faces to bring back into work. And the work to doing these work programs and conservation corps written out in Braille. If you can't reach that up there, the artist said, not my fault. I did not know we're gonna mount it four feet off the ground. He thought it'd be more accessible. If you can't read Braille at all, the full list of the first panel, bottom right. The other neat thing though is that's the negative relief of this positive relief, as if those pillars rolled these panels out, representing solidarity across the nation, working together for a common goal. So the room you're coming through is a transitional room leading us into war. As these souls represent being bombed at Pearl Harbor and the chaos felt around the world as we were thrown to World War II. And these stones came from that wall. I to remind us of that fact, the quote I go throughout with I hate war, I hate war, and once again over here, I hate war. The fountain itself, when operating, is essentially designed to let water coming through fractures in the wall, the same way the Arizona would look as it was going down at Pearl Harbor. And that leads us to our original statue of Franklin Delano Roosevelt that was placed here in 97. Stalin and Churchill during the, the conferences to figure out how to divide up Europe. Yeah. So this is the original statue that was placed here in 1997 when this was first opened. And first of all, if you look around back, you find the quote-unquote wheels they added and understand when there's still complaints. Uh, that's not a wheelchair, those are casters. There's no other way of putting it. You also notice this has peculiar arrangement. Anti-smoking activists asked to remove the cigarette holder. Make it think he's quite a bit less awkward though for President Clinton when he stood here and said, we should emulate this man in everything he did in life. So that's kind of hard to explain for a man out of his stroke. And the dog name is Fala, F-A-L-A. -A. And Fala's here because it gave the artist a certain amount of bronze to build this sculpture and he had some left over. And he did not feel right letting it go to waste for using it himself because it's paid for by the American people. So he decided everybody knows Fala. Everybody loves Fala. I'll create a Fala. That's a gift from the artist, not a commission piece. Grab 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, so you're in the fourth term, 1945. There's no end date on this room. He died April 12th, 1945, which is 90 days into his fourth term and 18 before the fall of Berlin. So he never saw the end of the war on either front. That leads us first of all to his horse strong funeral procession down here. The common man hushed over in sorrow behind him, and the only sound to be heard in an otherwise still fountain, other than Jeff's, of course, is a light trickling sound. The tears of a nation as he was perhaps the most loved president in American history. To give you an idea of how much so, he won re-election in 1936 by carrying 46 of 48 states. Unheard of. And that leads us to Miss Eleanor, first lady to the world, as many call her. As she was the first first lady to take a public policy, first first lady to publicly help the presidency, first female delegate to the United Nations, first ever U.S. delegate to the U.N. She was the Charter for Human Rights which still based her operation off of at the UN to this day. And is the first and only federal memorial to a first lady in America as of yet. And if you ever wondered what the relationship was between the Roosevelts, because Eleanor Roosevelt's maiden name was? Roosevelt. Roosevelt, thank you. <laughs> she was Theodore Roosevelt's niece, and Theodore was Franklin's fifth cousin, so they were six cousins. Six degrees apart, just like all of us, according to Kevin Bacon. <laughs>